Hi, everyone. My name is Fish Tong. I'm currently a PhD student in Carnegie Mellon Machine Learning Department. I'm intern in the robotic teams, working with Peter and Wei Cheng. Today, I'm going to talk about robust vision-based state estimator. So the goal for the robotic team is to actually build a very strong robotic uh, background such that we can use it to solve real AGI. And we, we are focusing on developing general learning-based algorithm such that it can work on a diverse of robotic tasks. In order to make sure the algorithm we develop is general enough, we need to uh, pick up like a pretty hard task in order to make sure this algorithm really work. So the task we pick here is to have a shadow hand rotating object to a desired pose. So a shadow hand robot is a robot that looks exactly like human hand. It has five fingers, it has several joints, it can do very delicate pose. This task is particularly difficult because if you ask a human engineer to hard code this high dimensional control, it is nearly impossible. But before the robot can start uh, moving his fingers and try to solve this task, the first question we want to answer is, how do the robot know where is the object and what is the object is posing? In other words, how do the robot know what is the position and orientation of the object? In robotics and reinforcement learning, we call these two state. To estimate state, you can actually use a 3D tracker. To use a 3D tracker, you need to attach some markers on the object you are interested in. We put our robot in a huge cage where we can surround our robot with a bunch of 3D sensors. These sensors will read off signal from the trackers and then tell you what is the 3D location of these markers. So as you can see, this method actually can give us pretty accurate uh, uh, object state, but it is pretty expensive and it kind of restricts the robot to only see object in this cage. And besides, if today I have a new object, I need to ask somebody to label the marker first for me, which is impractical. So here we want to use like a more biological inspired solution, which is just use cameras. So we can set up three cameras on this cage. The cameras are looking at our robot and our object. And from there, we try to infer the state of the object. So there are several benefits of building a vision-based uh, state estimator. It can be more flexible, it's cheaper, it's easy to set up, and it's really what we want to build on our robot. So to summarize, our environment looks like this. You have the cage, you have the robot in the center, you set up some camera that is looking at your robot and your object. And from these cameras, you capture three images that is looking at the scenes from the different point of view. And then the question we want to ask is, how do we go from these three images to the state we want to know? So now I introduce our method. Our model is a deep neural network. We say neural network is super powerful because it can generalize a, on a lot of tasks, achieving state-of-the-art results, and most importantly, it doesn't require the engineer to hard code the features. So before going into how to train this neural network, let's go into detail of how this neural network actually looks like. So our network takes in three images as input. We will pass each of the image into a, several convolution layers and fully connected layers. And then we aggregate the output from these convolutional towers to predict our final uh, object state. To train such network, you need, aside from the network itself, you need two additional things. One is a large amount of data that contains a lot of example of what are the inputs and what are the outputs. Like for here, our inputs are the three images and our output is the state of the object. So, so then the question is, how do we get this large data set? We say it is impossible to get it in the real world. Although we are able to get the images, we are not able to know where are the objects. 
So in order to solve this problem, we actually use a simulator. In a simulator, we build a very similar robot, a very similar uh, object, and we also set up three very similar cameras that is shooting from right, top, and left. And then from this simulator, we can actually also read off ground truth state of the object. So our training data actually looks like what, what is on the right-hand side, that we have three images paired with the ground truth state of the object. Besides that, we can also, uh, because it's in the simulator, we can easily change the texture and color of our robots. We can change the lightness. We can also change the background. So in, uh, to, um, if we do that, we can get like a very diverse data set that can cover maybe all the situation the agent might, might encounter in the real world. So by having this large amount of data and this objective function that basically minimize the distance between your prediction and the ground truth, we are able to train the network in the simulator and it works well in the real world. So it actually can predict super accurate uh, state of the object in the real world, and we are able to use it to really solve something with, the, uh, with this uh, state estimator. However, there's still some problem with our current vision system. The problem is our simulator actually need a very carefully aligned camera in, in, in the um, simulator. That means your camera need to have exactly the same position as the one you have in the real world. So how, how we get this value is the engineer need to go into the simulator, uh, slightly adjust this camera until the images are super aligned. So this actually require extra effort because every time we change the camera location, we need the engineer to do this again. Another thing is if during test time someone accidentally uh, touch one of the camera on the cage, then the vision system break. So here I want to emphasize how serious is this problem. So I show some um, state prediction error on real images using a calibrated environment and not calibrated environment. And you can see on the blue curve is with calibrated cameras and the others are with misaligned camera and the performance degrades a lot. So why this, is, why this is happening? Because our neural network is actually trying to find out some useful pattern, and from this useful pattern, it wants to directly go to the output you want, you, you want it to predict. Because your only objective function is this uh, Euclidean distance between the ground truth and your prediction. So if we sit back and think how people figure out this problem, is I have this hand here, Today, I want to ask you, like, what is the position and orientation of this cube in this 3D coordinate system? Given only this image captures from some random camera, what, what will you do? You probably will say, oh, yeah, of course, today we focus on objects, so I definitely need to like, focus on the object. And you probably will also say, I want to know where this uh, image is captured from. So you might also look at the arm of the robot to figure out what is the camera position. Combining your uh, object detection and your position of the camera, all together you figure out what is the global um, state of this object. So in order to answer this question, actually human need uh, geometric knowledge and also human need attention on the right object. So then the question is, how do we tell the robot that these tools are important and you need to somehow encode this in your solution? The solution is because in the simulator, we can get a bunch of 3D information. We can get whatever ground truth we want. So in order, uh, we, we can actually uh, extract more information from the simulator and then add this to, to the neural network training to tell him. So let me introduce these two. So the first one is we want to force the network to learn about geometry. So we say uh, when, when we are doing the previous uh, practice, we actually trying to infer where the camera is shooting from. So on top of the output there of each of the image, I will add an auxiliary task to say, oh, please uh, predict as well the camera position orientation to make sure that the robot really understand where this image is captured from. 
So by adding this auxiliary test, we can actually improve the prediction uh, on uh, position of the object. So you can see the red line is without this auxiliary task, and the green line is with this auxiliary task. So by adding this, we are actually forcing the network to generate, uh, to, to generate like a more reasonable solution for this. The other thing is we want to cast right attention to, to this task. So previously we say, oh, because we are answering like what is the state of the object, so we definitely need to watch the object instead of focusing on the background. So we circle the object and we say, if I want to answer what is the position of the camera, I probably need to focus on the arm of the robot. So these two are the thing we, we feel like uh, the robot should add this focus on. So here I ask the robot to further predict a bounding box for these two objects. Uh, note that these bounding box can be uh, obtained from the simulator, since in the simulator we can get like any kind of ground truth we want. And then from this bounding box location, we extract localized features and concatenate these localized features uh, for our final prediction. So by doing this, this kind of forced attention, actually the network can improve on orientation prediction. So the red line is a bad sign without any attention. The blue line is with attention on the queue. And and the bottom line, the orange one, is actually uh, forcing attention on the cube and also the arm of the robot. So here is some conclusion and takeaway from me: is uh, we are proposing like a learning-based uh, vision system that is very robust to the camera position, and we also hope it can transfer transfer well to the real setting. So previously in our release, we proposed this domain randomization where we randomize all kinds of like textures, lightness, and background in the simulator. But here I want to emphasize like in order for, for our vision model to really understand 3D, to understand geometry, maybe we can uh, extract more supervision from the simulator. The first thing is we can enforce in geometry learning by adding auxiliary tasks like predicting camera posts. And we can force in uh, right attention by asking the, the vision system to predict bumping box and also use the attended feature. So, thank you. Uh, we have a, like a one minute uh, Q and A. Th three minutes. Time for one question. We have about three Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, please, please use the microphone. Hello. Yeah. So, did you try the domain annotation methods uh, on this? Because uh, mm -hmm. the way to me, uh, with, with camera angle changes, then mm -hmm. you had uh, another feature mm -hmm. between on it. Mm -hmm. Because that, let's say, you use a domain annotation method yep. to adapt the change in camera angle. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about this approach? Oh, uh, so so actually I have tried to randomize the camera position like crazy, like the camera can move all around in this space. But then this actually degrades a lot on the, on, on the prediction of overall, even in the simulator. So that means if you just have this naive model that fit an image uh, passing through some convolution, it is not going to figure out this answer. And also we try to randomize the camera position uh, in our previous re release, and it kind of like hurt the final per uh, final performance on the real image, so we kind of remove it. So the thing is, our network structure is not good enough, so that even if we randomize the camera so much, it cannot learn something useful. So it needs something else to help it. Thanks. Oh, one more question. Oh. Does anyone want to ask? Hi, uh, good talk, by the way. Um, how do you think that your approach would work when the camera is not in the uh, hand? Um, because you know, mm -hmm. the camera will have, uh, you know, you have the extra complexity of the depth sensing and, and mm -hmm. pixel-wise differences, or, or pixel-wise differences are not. Mm -hmm. Uh, necessarily always reflective of, of mm -hmm. like real world differences in distance. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, how do you think that this would this would work when the object is uh, further away? It's further away. Um, 
So if the object is kind of like it has a distribution that is not in the distribution we train, then it definitely will diverge in the real. Like we cannot make sure. Or do you mean if we have extra death sensor, will they help? So my question is more like, do you think that the methodology of um, you know having having the auxiliary training for the camera positioning mm -hmm. would also apply when you have the object further away, such that you have the um, additional complexity of depth? Um, can you can you describe it again? Okay, so I guess I guess my question is like, so if all the cameras are, are like right here, and let's say the yep. new task is that you want the robot to be able to point to the object. Yes. So um, it's so the state I guess would just be the position of the object, and you want the mm -hmm. robot to be able to, to mm -hmm. be able to point to where the mm -hmm. object is in, in some sort of real world environment. Yeah. So if all the cameras are here and like kind of enclosing the robot, mm -hmm. the robotic hand in a cage, mm -hmm. and the object is over here. Yeah. Um, Sure, you can have all the, the camera positioning and stuff figured out, but mm -hmm. you have this extra distance to account for, right? The, the depth perception mm -hmm. capabilities of the camera. Yeah. So yeah. do you think that, I mean, like, I, I guess like it's more like a theoretical question, uh -huh. like how yeah. do you think that this approach would, would fare when you have that extra complexity? Um, so I think that extra complexity can be solved if you have like an additional camera that is looking at the side. So then you can make sure this dimension is correct. But the thing is, if something is super far away, like even for human, like if you have a car that is super far away, like it's across the street, for you, you cannot predict precisely like what is the distance between you and the, and the car. 